Right now, the world's population is 7.8 billion. People have spread far and wide over the world, claiming land and building cities. Some settlements have a successful and thriving history, but others tell a darker tale and some people have gone through great lengths to try to forget they ever existed. In today's video, we are getting kind of spooky as we talk about the 15 largest abandoned cities in the world. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to The Supreme, and click the notification bell for more lit content. Let's get rolling. Number 15. Ordo City, China China is the most populated country in the world, with 1.439 billion people spread across 3.62 million square miles of land. China is constantly building new towns and cities and islands in the hope of stimulating economic growth. Ordos is something referred to as the failed city of the future or the world's largest ghost town. Ordos is located in one of the 12 major subdivisions of Inner Mongolia in China. The area is pretty remote but is home to one-sixth of China's coal reserves, which makes it an attractive spot for development. In the hopes of stimulating more business, the government decided to build a pretty extravagant city from scratch, investing hundreds of millions of dollars into the infrastructure. The problem is that the sparkling new, futuristic-looking city was built with a distinct lack of demand. The new city was built relatively close to the old city of Ordos, and people just didn't want to move. Ordos has an urban area of 77 square miles. Bear in mind that Manhattan is 22.83 square miles. And originally, it had been intended to house upwards of half a million people. When demand was better evaluated, the city aimed to accommodate 300,000 people. But that never happened. Touring this city is a weird vibe. Big, impressive, and futuristic structures like sports stadiums lay empty, and it kind of feels like an apocalypse town. Reportedly, farmers were bribed to move there, and government officials were relocated to the area, and now there is around 100,000 people living in the city, bringing it to a one-third capacity. Number 14, Centralia. Centralia is often referred to as the city on fire and was the real-life inspiration behind the best-selling horror video game Silent Hill. Before 1962, Centralia was a coal mining town with around 2,700 residents at its peak. Today, it's a hellish and almost entirely abandoned area. Located in Columbia County in the U.S. state of Pennsylvania, Centralia dates back to 1793. In the early 1960s, landfill and Dumping was a problem in the city. It's suspected that the fire started as the town illegally burned trash in order to clean up its dump sites. The fire, reportedly lit on May 27, 1962, was still seen burning in early July, despite several attempts to put it out. By August, it seemed clear the fire had spread underground through the mines. Eventually, mines were closed as they were filled with toxic gases, which put an end to Centralia's mining industry. Despite that, people kept on living there and kind of ignored the fact that the ground was getting hotter and hotter and that poisonous clouds of gases were floating around and up from the ground every now and again. People in Centralia were getting sick but ignored the problem until one day in 1981 when a 12-year-old boy fell into a sinkhole that opened up in his backyard. He was saved but the story could have ended in tragedy. National attention was then focused on the town, which was crumbling under the intense underground heat. Congress spent $42 million to relocate residents, but 10 refused to leave the gassy, burning town. Today, Centralia is a ghost town, and the fire is still burning. And it's suspected that that fire will burn for at least another 100 years. David DeCock of the University of Pennsylvania Press described the conditions under Centralia as a world where no human could live, hotter than the planet Mercury, its atmosphere as poisonous as Saturn's. But uh, you can still drive there these days if you want to visit, not that I would ever recommend it. Number 13. Plymouth Montserrat. Not just a ghost city. 
Plymouth Montserrat is possibly the world's only abandoned capital city. Plymouth was once the thriving luxury capital of Montserrat, a British overseas territory in the Caribbean, with a surprisingly high number of Irish settlers. In the 1980s, Montserrat was a celebrity hotspot and vacation destination for the rich and fabulous. The Rolling Stones and Paul McCartney even recorded albums at the town's Air Studios. Things changed in 1989 when Hurricane Hugo smashed through the island, located just 27 miles southwest of Antigua. The town was rebuilt, only to see destruction six years later when the previously inactive Sofrier Hills volcano erupted and started scattering ash over the town. It was evacuated over the following months and formally abandoned in 1997. The formerly glamorous town of Plymouth became covered in ash and these days it's only accessible by a handful of official tour companies that offer people a chance to see the devastated settlement. Buildings have been near buried by debris, and the ghost town is an eerie shade of gray as a result of the volcanic fallout. Number 12. Komenskop, Namibia. Diamonds are not forever when it comes to the mining town of Komenskop, one of the richest settlements in Africa. The first diamond was found in 1908, which led to quick development in the area. At the time, the land was part of the German Empire, and the settlement was German-run, which means that the settlement had a very European architectural style. The town had a ballroom, a bowling alley, a theater, casino, and the first X-ray station in the Southern Hemisphere, as well as the first tram system in Africa. However, as European politics ignited and Germany lost the Second World War, the town's sparkle started to fade. As new diamond mines were discovered, people started leaving the settlement, and by 1956, the town was considered to be abandoned. As Comanscott was built in the desert, its desertion meant that it soon became knee-deep in sand. These days, it's often used as an eerie filming location and is a popular destination for tourists visiting Namibia. Most poignantly, the town was featured in an episode of Life After People as Coleman Scott really does give us an idea of how the world might look after we're all gone. Walking through early 20th century homes filled with sand is certainly a weird vibe. Number 11, Kennecott, Alaska. Kennecott, Alaska is one of the coldest ghost towns in the world. The story of the town began in the summer of 1900, when prospectors were exploring the Kennecott Glacier and came across a very rich concentration of copper, which was an increasingly valuable resource at the turn of the century, as electricity, which requires copper wires, became part of people's everyday lives. J.P. Morgan and other rich American families formed the Alaska Syndicate and built the town in order to mine the valuable mineral. By 1911, a railroad had been set up and the town was ready to open up. Success, as it often is, was short-lived and by 1925, it was predicted that the area would soon be outmined. Despite producing $200 million worth of ore, by 1938, the town had been abandoned. The landscape in Kennecott is cruel, but breathtaking and it's still possible to visit the ghost town with the help of a local tour guide. The town is listed on the National Register of Historic Places and is considered to be one of the best living relics of early 20th century copper mining. Number 10. Ross Island, India Ross Island is another abandoned British settlement devastated by natural disaster. This abandoned city is more like a ghost island in the middle of the Indian Ocean, and these days it looks seriously spooky. Located in the remote Andaman archipelago and some 800 miles away from the coast of mainland India, the island was struck by an 8.1 magnitude earthquake in 1941, resulting in over 3,000 deaths. Before that, life on the island wasn't a bed of roses by any means. Ross Island was originally established as a penal colony, a place to send convicts. Prisoners were treated cruelly and often tortured. If they tried to escape, they were often killed by aboriginal tribes of the Andamans. It was reported in the late 1800s that 700 prisoners were dying a year as a result of poor conditions. The island was invaded by Japanese forces during World War II, but was later recaptured by the British. The island was formally abandoned in 1945 and has been taken over by jungle and wildlife. The settlement is now a ghost town, likely filled with actual ghosts from its grueling history. Despite its morbid backstory, 
tourists still visit the lost colony out of a dark fascination. From photos, it does appear hauntingly beautiful. So would you visit? Number 9. Bodie, California Bodie is one of the United States' most famous ghost towns, and the abandoned settlement preserves a slice of history from the Gold Rush era. Four prospectors struck gold in a valley 75 miles southeast of Lake Tahoe in 1859. The town got its name when one of the founding prospectors, W.S. Body, died in a blizzard a year later. The Gold Valley then drew significant interest and the town of Bodie was officially a boom town in 1876. At its height, Bodie had a population of between 5,000 to 7,000, had nine stamp mills, a bank, a Chinatown, and even a red light district. The Californian town enjoyed short-lived success. The gold had largely been mined by 1914 and the rise in cars meant that people who worked in the town were less likely to want to live there. Conditions were surprisingly harsh. The town had just 120 residents in 1920 and became an official ghost town in the 1940s. These days it receives a lot of tourism as an authentic Wild West ghost town, although just 110 buildings are still standing. You probably won't be surprised to hear that some believe that the abandoned settlement is haunted. There's also an urban legend associated with the ghost town that says if visitors take anything from the town, even so much as a stone, they'll be cursed with bad luck. Number 8. Xi Qing Sunken City, China Xi Qing is like a real-life lost city of Atlantis. The ancient city, often referred to as the Lion City, was first settled during the Eastern Han Dynasty and became an official city 1300 years ago. What was once a center of economics and politics, Xi Qing now sits submerged under 131 feet of water at the bottom of the man-made Qindao Lake. The city was intentionally flooded in 1959 as part of the Xinyan River Dam project. 300,000 people in the nearby area were relocated as part of the hydroelectric power station project. Evidence suggests that the city was thriving until the end of the 16th century, although its history between the 1500s and 1959, when it was eradicated, isn't well documented. It likely was abandoned and forgotten about as a result of China's turbulent political history. After the lake was formed, the ancient history was forgotten again until 2001 when it was rediscovered and explored. The lost city has been preserved by the cool lake conditions and is a time capsule to the previous life. These days, divers are able to explore the incredible sunken architecture, which is all the more haunting as it lays still under a ceiling of water. Number 7. Fordlandia, Brazil this is a strange one for sure. Fordlandia in Brazil was one of the most notorious failed projects in history. You'll know the name Henry Ford as the American industrialist and founder of the Ford Motor Company, a company still at the forefront of the American automobile industry today. Back in the roaring 20s, Henry Ford needed rubber to make tires in order to keep up with the massive demand for cars across the world. Tired of dealing with rubber manufacturers in Asia, the tycoon had the ill-fated idea of creating the world's largest rubber plantation in the middle of the Amazon, buying up 6 million acres. Ford dubbed his new colony Fordlandia, which is kind of cringeworthy, right? Well, things got a lot worse than a self-absorbed city name. Brazilian workers were forced to Americanize by speaking English, attending poetry readings, learning square dances, playing gold, and abstaining from alcohol. Ultimately, the plan failed. The rubber tree plants were barely growing, and the ones that did were hit with disease. The colony was struck with malaria, and in 1930, disgruntled workers rioted by smashing up property and overturning vehicles. In the end, Henry Ford pulled out of the rubber industry and Fordlandia was left to rot. Some of the buildings are still standing today and the spot has become an off-track tourist attraction. In 2008, Icelandic composer Johan Johansson released a concept album inspired by the city. Number 6. Pripyat, Ukraine a lot of you will have heard of the Chernobyl disaster, the world's most devastating nuclear accident. But did you know that a city by the power plant has been abandoned for over 30 years? Pripyat was found in 1970 and was the ninth nuclear city to be developed in the Soviet Union. Just 16 years after its founding, the Chernobyl disaster took place on April 26, 1986. 
Reactor number four exploded, causing large amounts of radioactive waste to spew into the atmosphere, raining down on Pripyat and beyond. The city was evacuated and an 18.6 mile exclusion zone was drawn up around the power plant. 30 people were killed in the explosion and all 49,000 residents of Pripyat were rehoused. Before the disaster, the town had 15 schools, 10 gyms, 25 stores, thousands of homes, pools, factories, movie theaters, and an amusement park, all of which lies in ruins today. Some people have illegally ventured into the abandoned city and taken photos and videos. It's spooky to see Soviet-era propaganda still hanging on the walls. The city would be frozen in time if it wasn't for the trees and wildflowers taking back the space. Despite the toxic radiation, populations of deers and boars are said to be booming in the ghost city. The city of Pripyat may well have been entirely swallowed by forest by the time the area is safe to return to again which at the moment is estimated to be 2065, which will be nearly 80 years after the residents fled. Number 5. Gunkanjima Island, Japan How does one of the most populated places in the world become a ghost town? Money. That's how. I feel like places are abandoned for one of two reasons. Money or disaster. And if they're abandoned because of disaster, it's usually only because the disaster meant that the place could no longer generate money. Gunkanjima Island, also known as Hashima Island, is around 9 miles from the city of Nagasaki. The small island was just 16 acres but was home to 5,259 people in 1959, making it one of the most densely populated places at the time. That being said, a lot of the workers on the island were abducted Korean civilians and prisoners of war who were forced to work in harsh conditions. Gunkanjima was the location of several underwater coal mines and was developed by the famous Mitsubishi Corporation. At its peak, the small island was producing 400,000 tons of coal per year, but by the early 1970s, the coal started running out, and in 1974, the island was closed and there was mass migration back to the mainland, leaving Gunkanjima untouched. Remaining shut for around 35 years, the island was opened up again in 2009 and became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2015. Nature has reclaimed large parts of the city and it's now a breathtaking but spooky tourist attraction. Number 4. Prora, Germany I can totally understand why nobody would want to go to a Nazi vacation resort, but Prora isn't exactly pretty. It's a complex of eight identical tower block buildings built in the late 1930s off the coast of Germany's Rügen Islands. Rooms in the three mile stretch of concrete do have nice coastal views, but the amenities were designed to be basic and each floor had shared bathrooms. The idea behind the resort was to be a space to bring German workers together through the Strength Through Joy Nazi Leisure Initiative. Once the war began, Prora was abandoned, leaving 10,000 rooms empty. After the war, it became the territory of communist East Germany and was basically forgotten. After the Berlin Wall fell, there have been attempts to rejuvenate the space by artists, but the monstrous structure still lay almost entirely abandoned. There have been some attempts to revive the space as a vacation destination, but a structure built by the Nazis isn't exactly top of people's lists to visit for a little R&R. Number 3. Heart Island, New York Most New Yorkers will have never heard of Heart Island, let alone it being a known coordinate for the rest of the wider world. If you live in the five boroughs, you may be shocked to know that Heart Island is a mass graveyard for over a million people who were unclaimed, unidentified, or too poor for a burial. Burials are still taking place there, and the only people on the island are jail inmates who earn 50 cents an hour to dig graves, and city officials. The tax-funded cemetery does not appear on official MTA or NYC Department of Transportation maps and is off-limits to the public. The island has an undesirable history, too. Not only is it now a mass burial ground for a million lost souls, it also was once home to a narcotics rehabilitation center, a prison, a women's asylum, a Cold War nuke base, a tuberculosis hospital, and a yellow fever quarantine zone. Okay, that's terrifying. 
The chaos and devastation this island must have seen over its history is unimaginable. Several buildings on the island, including a hospital and a chapel, are totally abandoned. The thought of the burial island, right there just off the coast of Manhattan, sends actual shivers down my spine. Number 2. Monceau Seaforts, UK In waters off the coast of the UK, there's a wartime city on stilts. The Monceau Army Seaforts sit out in the Thames estuary off the coast of Kent and were constructed in 1942 in order to protect the UK from German invasion. These structures had a successful wartime career, but were soon decommissioned in 1950. Left out at sea, in the 1960s, the forts were taken over by pirate radio stations and sometimes even squatters who risked ties to get a roof over their heads out at sea. Monceau forts were stationed at four locations around the coast of the UK, although these days only those eight miles off the coast of Whitstable still stand. On a clear day, they can be viewed from the Shubernus East Beach. It's possible to take a boat out to see the seven intimidating towers, which would have been manned and stationed at all times during the war. Viewing from the water is one thing, but actually trying to get inside one is another. The structures are rusty and unsafe. Project Red Sand had been launched to conserve the abandoned towers and allow visitors to safely view from the structures and learn about their history in British defense. Number 1. Krakow, Italy meet the most beautiful abandoned city in the world. Krakow looks like it could be used as the set for Game of Thrones or something like that. The town is a former medieval village inland from the Gulf of Taranto and has ties to the Bronze Age. The breathtaking town grew from 450 inhabitants to 2,590 in 1561. The community was built around agriculture, but a monastery brought in religious footfall. Despite its beauty, the town suffered a series of misfortunes that ultimately led to its demise. In 1656, a devastating plaque tore through the town, severely diminishing the town's population. Recovering, the town was then hit by famine when poor conditions led to crop failure. The town's placement on a hill of clay-rich soil caused devastating landslides in 1600, 1805, 1857, and 1933. Eventually, devastating landslides in the 1950s through the 1970s forced out the last of the remaining inhabitants. Oh, and there were earthquakes too. Jeez, Krakow couldn't catch a break. These days the city lay in ruins, but it's still breathtaking to visit. Tourism helps fund conservation efforts, which means that the site can continue to be maintained and its beauty can be enjoyed by visitors. Whoa, well I feel like I learned a lot today. What about you? I know that some people may prefer to keep these abandoned cities hidden, but I'm glad we've shed some light on them today. Which city do you think is the creepiest? I'm going to go with Gunkanjami Island or Ross Island. Let me know what you think in the comment section below.